Hey, good morning, guys. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous Sunday morning. Uh, the sun's shining. It's, you know, we're stuck at home, but it's the kind of day you really want to go for a walk. But it's funny because if you start sneezing because of allergies, people are going to, you know, <laughs> burn you at the stake, right? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it has nothing to do with this. Uh, I wanted to share a few thoughts because I saw a movie this morning called The Lost Arcade uh, on Amazon. You know, stuck at home, you get Amazon Prime. It's a free movie. Um, so if any of you have Prime or are thinking about getting it because of CV, um, I really, really recommend this movie. Um, again, it's called The Lost Arcade. And uh, I thought it was just a documentary about uh, a closing arcade at this really famous uh, place in Chinatown. Um, but anyway, it turned into this kind of melancholic, really sweetly sad thing like a documentary about old cultures dying out and uh, old beautiful communities that cropped up these micro communities like in new york city you can go a block and there's like a whole other micro community there everyone knows each other um but anyway i was a child of the 90s i was always the young on the young side so i would see all these adults having fun and doing cool stuff and uh i would try to participate right but uh, I was pretty young. I was always the young kid in the groups, in any group I hung out in. And um, But anyway, I witnessed all this happening at the very tail end of it. And I'm, I've been witnessing a lot of times changing. You know, arcade, The arcade scene was thriving when I was a kid, and then uh, it kind of fell apart and vanished. So anyway, I saw this documentary. Uh, I wanted to give it a high, high recommendation if you're interested at all in fighting games, the FGC, Fighting Game Community, uh, or if you grew up in the 90s or you're just interested in gaming history and uh, culture around it. I, I just want to share some thoughts about my own uh, my own upbringing when it came to arcades and fighting games because this movie really spoke to me. And uh, at the end of it, I just want to encourage you to check it out. Um, I really, really recommend it. What... What attracted me about arcades? Um, well, first of all, when I was a little kid, uh, I would get taken to the arcade. and One of my parents would give me like a $5 bill. You go to the machine, the coin machine, you put it in, and uh, these quarters would come out. We didn't have tokens, there were quarters. Although I'll talk about a place that had tokens. And uh, I would have, you know, a million quarters in both my pockets, and that was my budget for the whole afternoon. I would have to make it last, right? So I would carefully watch the competition, scope out the competition. This Tekken machines, Tekken 3 was really hot, and uh, games like Street Fighter 2 and Alpha and Capcom games, Marvel vs. Capcom, those like Street Fighter vs. Marvel and those kinds of games, like uh, Marvel superheroes, those old games. Or I play billiards or something like that, and um, I grew up around this uh, culture where it's like, hey, just have some money and make it last because if you lose too quickly, you're just going to sit there being bored, and you have to watch people play or kind of press the buttons pretending that you were playing. So there was this kind of early thing of you got to get good, right? Make the money last, and these these were places. A lot of these places were very cigarette smoky, and um, it, there were laws eventually that made it so that uh, you're not allowed to smoke indoors anywhere in where I live in New Jersey and New York. But back in then back in those days you could smoke inside. So I was a little kid breathing in lungfuls of cigarette smoke and it was I would always come home reeking. Oh man, I can't say those are good times, but <laughs> that was part of the flavor. This the smell of cigarettes makes me think of arcades and stuff and pool halls. Uh, I would play a lot of pool when I was uh, younger too. Bowling and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so as I got a little older and I would go to the city, uh, I commuted to, uh, an art school for my college years, a couple of basically two years straight. And, uh, there was, uh, my local arcade was actually at Port Authority Station, uh, in, around 42nd Street, Midtown in, uh, 2000, early 2000s. And, uh, I have these really fond memories of playing there. Uh, the games that I played were, um... I played a lot of Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, or at least at home. I thought I was good at it, but it turns out, no, I wasn't. Because you would play against these guys who were the best players on the East Coast, some of them. And they would go there to train. And um, I really got into Capcom vs. SNK2. Uh, I played a lot of Tekken, a lot of Tekken, uh, but I was never uh, at a high level at it. Um, 
there were these guys that were like, you know, full grown adults. And I was barely a late teenager, you know, what, uh, this little scrawny kid coming home from school with my art supplies. And I would spend all my money. Um, I would even some nights when it got really heated, I would spend my bus money. Uh, I would use up all my money uh, playing uh, Marvel versus Capcom or something or CVS two, and I would have to uh, overdraw my debit card just to get a bus ticket to go home because I accidentally spent all my money at the arcade, and uh, so that's like a thirty dollar bus ride where normally it was four bucks or something like that. Uh, so these games really get in your head and uh, I have these memories I just want to share some memories where like there was one time some again these are like scary older guys right like tough guys from the city and I was just a suburb kid and uh, there was one guy behind me uh, yelling at me like dude you gotta you gotta keep hitting them while they're down in Tekken I was playing Kazuya one day he's like you gotta keep that's why you keep losing you gotta hit them while they're down and what i didn't say because i was scared you know i didn't talk to anybody i was like dude i don't want to get stabbed when i leave (laughs) this arcade because i knew of course you could hit guys while they're down that's part of the game in tekken but uh it's there was always this fear of like they're going to turn around and punch me which was ironic because there was a lot of times where i wanted to turn around and punch someone who beat me right and not in like a real way but like you would get really heated and uh, later I learned when I really got into fighting games, like uh, letting people get up is actually a form of disrespect. So it was kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because it's like saying, I'm going to let you get up because I don't take you seriously. And of course, I would lose those fights. You're supposed to hit people while you're down in Tekken. Uh, you would learn things like disrespect and respect, and you would shake people's hands sometimes. Like, if you could imagine this little skinny white kid in the middle of New York City and there's I'm surrounded by tough guys, right? Really tough looking guys. And sometimes I would win a round or win a fight and everybody would scream, oh, you know, and I'd be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I'd be scared and excited at the same time. It's like, wow, I've, I found a place where I'm actually, I don't know. I didn't feel welcome there exactly, but that's mostly because I was shy. It's like, I'm so terrified of you guys because you all look like you're going to stab me. But like, oh man, they were, it was so much fun. And so there was this arcade. My main arcade was Port Authority Station because it was the place that I would stop by. Uh, On my way to school, when no one was there, I would practice. And there was no one there. And on my way home, there was a lot of people there because it was usually the evenings and definitely on weekends. And I would spend a lot of money there. I spent a lot of time. And uh, there were rumors I would hear sometimes people talking or they would talk to me about this place in Chinatown. But I never got the name of it. Or if I did, I forgot it. But sometimes I would take the train down to uh, Chinatown and I would go looking for it, like in Shenmue. But there was no GPSs back in those days. And I couldn't ask anybody because I was scared of talking to strangers. (laughs) So I could just ask a bunch of guys at the arcade, hey, have you heard of this place in Chinatown? Where is it? How do I find it? I don't know. For some reason, I could never find this place. But watching this uh, documentary, I learned it's called uh, Chinatown Fair. And if I had found it, uh, I having watched the documentary now, it's like, wow, that's an amazing little ecosystem I would have loved to participate in. I probably would have gotten my ass kicked, but uh, it would have been amazing. Because those guys take and took uh, fighting games really seriously. And this was the mid-2000s, early 2000s. It would have been the perfect time. Uh, People were playing Tekken Tag still, Tekken 4. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was hot. Uh, Again, Capcom vs. SNK 2, that was my game. I loved it. Uh, Man, it would have been so much fun. But rewinding a little bit, uh, in my high school years, there was this place called Sports World in Paramus, New Jersey, where me and my buddies, we would get into their, (laughs) maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but we had a a little clique of friends, a couple of guys who would, uh, we would get together on Fridays, Saturdays, whatever, we would get together whenever, any nights. And my one friend, uh, he was the cool guy, you know, who had a car, and uh, he would get us in his white Benz, who he bought it used or something, but uh, somehow he got a white Benz for like a really good deal. And we would go cruising and he uh, souped it up. 
<laughs> with like speakers and a bass in the back and a CD changer in his trunk. And we would listen to J-pop <laughs> and go driving around. And one of our haunts was uh, Sports World. And it was an amazing little place where like there was a pretty healthy scene. We would play a lot of tech and tag. And uh, there were some nights where like I wasn't like an expert at the game at the time. And, you know, we would train at home at each other's houses to get good. And then we would take take our skills to the road and uh, fight other guys who were playing. And uh, there was one time where a guy wouldn't let me get up. And I didn't understand the game well enough. So, like, I would try to tag out my characters. And he would punish me when my character, my, when my, uh, my tag team member was coming in. Because sometimes you, the way that the game worked, basically, is that you have to... Uh, tag when it's safe and he would punish me because i would tag when it wasn't safe and i was like dude you you won't even let me tag you're not even playing the game right and i was like complaining i shouldn't have said anything right you never talk to your partner during these games bad idea and i remember he was like screaming at me what 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 <laughs> and i was trying to reason with him like i'm trying to learn the game dude just let me tag and i was being unreasonable i should have known there's no mercy in the arcade but he was screaming, what, what? And I wanted to meet him in the back <laughs> to get into a fist fight with him. And I, you got to imagine, I'm just this little kid. Again, I'm the young kid in my group of friends. And they're like telling me, George, you're being stupid. Stop. Relax. Just stop uh, trying to get into fights with strangers. <laughs> and we were scared that they were going to be waiting for us. Anyway, so that's a story. Another story is we played a lot of DDR. And uh, we even got those nice pads this game called Dance Dance Revolution, where uh, it's like Guitar Hero, except instead of playing the guitar or rock band, you step uh, in tune with the music and you do these dance routines. And some of the really advanced songs, you could do tricks like playing backwards. And there were a couple of times where I would surprise my friends and DDR would gather a crowd on a Friday night. So again, you imagine me, this little kid, uh, surprising all my friends and like 20 other people standing around the ddr machine because it's like oh it's that kid and i would play some songs backwards like not even looking at the screen and i would like look at the crowd like yeah that's right i'm doing this <laughs> we would have so much fun and there's there's something very special about the feeling of gathering a crowd and it's like oh it's that kid and uh yeah me and my friends would do that there were other times when uh, we would drive over to Fort Lee, New Jersey, and um, there was this place called Cyber Zone, and uh, it, it was a Korean internet cafe, and you could uh, rent time at a computer and play games like uh, Counter Strike, and that was back in the days of like Counter Strike One Point Three, and um, there was one night where I was the last guy surviving on my team, and I had. Uh, what do you call that game? Uh, the rifle, the uh, CT rifle. And um, I was fighting against all these amazing Korean players. And I was the last guy standing and my friends were like, yo, oh man, oh yo, he's going to do it. And I beat the whole Korean team by myself one night. And I was like so excited and again scared because these are like tough guy Koreans, you know, the kinds that like <laughs> smoked and stuff and hung out. And of course, smoking is not smoking's not cool. But these were the tough guys, right? And I was just a high schooler, a scrawny kid. And um, there was at the end of that round, someone in the in the place got up and screamed like, "Who's this guy?" And they said my uh, gamer tag. Uh, it wasn't G Prime, but like they're like, "Who's G Prime?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I kind of stuck my head down, like, "Oh, they're gonna find me." And it was a moment of pride and fear and. Uh, those are amazing, amazing years. And uh, part of the reason why I love this documentary so much is it also captures the melancholy of what happens when it's all over because those were some really exciting years. I can't explain like the level of like heightened awareness, like every second. And man, you would get into these really heated rivalries and it's like, oh, it's that guy. I'm going to beat him this week. And um, you never really knew who these people were. Or at least I, I never got to know them. Um, and you would take breaks. People would go out to smoke or you'd get like a hot dog and some soda or something. Kind of watch people play. Try to study their style so you could beat them. But um, since I was the young kid in my group of friends, 
uh, they either all went off to college or they moved. And by the time I was a senior in high school, I was the only kid left uh, in this group of friends. So part of the the, the feeling that this uh, movie captures so well is this feeling of melancholy of like everyone else has moved on and I'm the only guy still here trying to to recapture the magic, you know? And um, it's this haunting feeling of like, I really wish those days never ended. And of course it's been almost 20 years now, but like, it still kind of haunts me of like, I've, those were some of the funnest years of my life. And part of the culture was arcades. You know, we would go and hang out and uh, test ourselves. And uh, so anyway, a year later, a couple of years later, I'd be in New York City by myself. And uh, there were all these like little things that I would do. Of, uh, I would train at home. I would buy the game on PlayStation 2 and train all day just so I can not be embarrassed as bad the next time I challenged those amazing players at Port Authority. And uh, there was one day where I was playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and I just got crushed. Like I couldn't even touch a guy. He was playing a whole other game. I, the way that me and my friends played MVC2 was pretty pretty lame in gaming terms. Like We were just, okay, I'll hit you and do a combo, and then you'll do a combo. It was very boring. But like this guy would do off-the-ground combos to me. He would use glitches, and glitches that were accepted in the community as part of the game. And I could not get up, and I was so embarrassed I never played the game again. And um, it was so weird. Uh, one more, a couple more instances. I hope this isn't too boring, but I just, the movie has me in a mood and I just wanted to share some thoughts. Of um, There's one time I went to uh, Tokyo for um, a comic award that I had won. And that's a story for another time. I, I kind of wish I could tell that story. Uh, I'm scared of it being boring. But anyway, uh, I went to Tokyo and I had a night to burn and i was like oh i keep hearing about uh, these japanese arcades and how um you don't play next to your opponent you actually there's like a grid of like eight machines and they're all facing away from each other so you wouldn't know who you were fighting you just kind of play in arcade mode and a challenger comes and fights you and i spent a whole night uh covered in cigarette smoke it was disgusting and amazing and um i was playing street fighter 4 which I thought I was pretty good at. Even by American standards, I was pretty darn good. Um, anyway, so long story short, as I was playing against these Japanese players for so long that they recognized me and they're like, oh, it's that American guy that sucks. <laughs> no, one, no one wanted to play with me. So I would just kind of sit there for like an hour. But there was this one time where I won a round and I was like, there was like silence around me and I was like, oh, I just beat a Japanese player. I just beat a round. I think I was playing uh, Goken or Akuma. But but that's the amazing feeling of like, you're not supposed to be able to stand up against these amazing players. But as, as just this, ca not casual, but like I would play fairly seriously, but I could never beat the serious players at like a tournament or something. But like, there's that feeling of, oh crap, I just beat them. And, and I earned it. They were trying to beat me. I actually almost kind of am decent at this game. And um, in Tokyo, those are the best players in the world. And they play there every night. So part of what I'm trying to say is there's this feeling of community and this amazing feeling of self-improvement that happens with fighting games especially. I mean, these games are like about studying systems, like deep systems, frame data, and it's also about your physical uh, like reflexes, muscle memory, practicing so much that your hands move by themselves before your brain even has time to think. Uh, mind games with your enemy. Um, it's it's an amazing scene, and it's gone. It's been gone for years. And playing online is not the same thing. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share some of my experiences. Um, but this also has me thinking because obviously I'm making comics and the business of comics is similar to arcades. Comics has been able to hold on longer, but I feel like they're kind of dying out in the same way, kind of in the same way. Um, but I imagine a business in an arcade, there's this line in the movie 
where one of the owners says like, don't invest in something you love because basically you'll keep it open and in business longer than you should. Like if you're losing a lot of money, you should close shop. But if you love it too much, you're not going to want to close it. And I feel the same way with comics. Um, I don't know a lot of people who are making a living at it. And yet we make comics anyway. We love it too much to stop. And I think it's the same with a lot of comic shops. Uh, they stay open because they love it and they're not making a lot of money. And the times are changing. Culture is changing around us. Uh, on one hand, we want to adapt, but on the other hand, it's like there's these amazing microcultures, your local comic shop or your local arcade. And it's this beautiful, like, you have to have been there to know what it's like. It's not it's not something I can explain, but the this documentary explains it pretty well. It's I'm sure there's like people who play MTG, a Magic the Gathering. Um, it's probably like that when you go to a shop and you buy a pack of cards and it feels really nice and you sit down with a bunch of people you know and that's how you spend your Friday nights. You know, everyone's single. <laughs> Somebody like, yo, did you hear... Did you hear George got a girlfriend? Oh, we're never gonna see him again. <laughs> He's oh man, that's that's funny stuff. But um, I'm trying to think of like what what would it look like if an arcade existed still nowadays, or if it married with comic shops? And I was thinking, all right, so what you would need is a giant place like my beloved sports world. Um, over here on the left, you got magic tables, D and D tables. You've got a comic shop over there. You've got arcade games on this side. Maybe a bunch of artist alley kind of thing. And I was, as I was listing all the things I want in the ultimate arcade slash comic shop, I'm like, oh, it's just a convention that's open 365 days a year. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. Like people, the, the some genius who doesn't mind losing money may invent this at some point, and they should where it's like a giant place where people can just go and stay there all day, read comics, play games, play card games, uh, have a snack, hang out with the buds. I don't know. It's Maybe it's a pipe dream. Maybe it can't exist anymore. But uh, anyway, that's the that's the thing. That's, that's what uh, this documentary did to me. It's, I'm thinking about it. I'm sitting here sad like there were several times in the documentary where i had tears in my eyes not because of like not like in a sad romance kind of way but like i was actually sad like wow these guys have lived through what i've lived through like this not only are the arcades gone but all the memories are like we're just we want them back we don't want these places to shut down and like people would there was one guy who wouldn't write down like a, a message to the old arcade because that would mean that it was really closed to him and uh man that that it was so real to me and but you know i'm i'm 35 almost now and it's like times have changed and these these are old times you know hanging out with the old buddies all of us have you know we have families we've all spread out we don't really talk to each other anymore it's and we're different people now you know but but we had those really amazing times when we would hang out and and train together. It's like, I just want to be better than my one friend over there because he keeps kicking my ass in Tekken. So I'm just going to train just to beat him. <laughs> and then he trains to beat you and then you keep getting better and better. And next thing you know, you're doing tournaments and stuff. And uh, I don't have so much time uh, for that these days, but I'll tell you something. After that documentary, I, I downloaded... Tekken 7 again on my PlayStation. <laughs> and uh, I just, I, I got to taste it one more time. It's the weekend. I'm going to, I just want to have a few rounds, you know? So anyway, I, if it's not obvious already, again, I give this movie my highest recommendation if you're into this kind of uh, cultural stuff. And um, there you go. Uh, if you want to support this channel, uh, if you like videos like this, let me know. Um, I could try to make it more succinct. I know this was rambly, but um this was this is a very real part of uh, my childhood, and it really meant a lot to me. And uh, I don't know what the future holds for arcades and comic shops, but uh, I hope that it can exist again in some form. 
where uh, that magic can be recaptured. It was a lot of fun. Not so much the creepy dudes probably selling drugs and stuff. <laughs> I could do without that, but man, the the community and the seeing old faces and having rivals. Like, oh, it's that guy. I'm going to get him this time. <laughs> I, I hope he shows up. I hope he has the guts to show up. I'm going to get him. <laughs> yeah, that's a good feeling. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, let me know if you want to hear uh, more videos like this. Uh, I'll try to figure it out. I've got stories that I want to tell, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, if you want to support this channel, uh, I have a link to my Patreon below. Uh, actually, no, it's just really a, a sort of a tip jar, but um, there are perks involved. Like uh, I'm working on a comic now called Bad Dreams, where I'm actually posting every page as I draw it. So you can read the comic in real time as I'm drawing it. So that's cool. If you want to have a little perk for like supporting this channel, there, there that is. There's also going to be a pre-order link if you want to buy a physical copy of the book to my Etsy store, also below. But yeah, that's it. That's the news for now. I just wanted to share this movie. Uh, if you're bored and uh, somehow you've listened to all this, <laughs> consider that an appetizer. The actual movie is way better. Um, but yeah, uh, I will probably release Bad Dreams in the next week or two. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And uh, I'll do an update then and talk about the comic. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you guys next time.